So, hello again, guys. I really hope that you enjoy our conference. And uh, now, Mrs. Ruchisliu is uh, going to tell us more about the marketing in open source, something which is very important, not only the technology, and congratulate her. <laughs> Hello everyone. So my name's Ruth Cheesley. I'm from the UK. And I'm going to talk a bit today about how you can use the world's first open source marketing automation platform to enhance the digital experience that you provide across your web presence or your digital channels. If you've got any questions, you can ask them at this link or we'll have questions at the end of the session. Um, and if you want to connect with me on Twitter, I'm at rcheesley. I'm on pretty much every social media platform there is, so. So to start with, just a short background about Mortic and about me. If the technology works. Oh, my slides are not going forwards. Okay. So Mortic started life in 2014 as an open source marketing automation platform, which you'll find information about on mortic.org. And in 2016, an enterprise version of that was launched by the person who founded Mortic, which is on mortic.com. So if you see the two web properties, that's the difference. And in May this year, the hosted enterprise version was acquired by a company called Acquia, who are very big in the Drupal community. So it's kind of, um, things are really taking off in the community. My background, I've been using open source for about 18 years. I've been a contributor in the Joomla project. I've served on the leadership team for about three and a half years. I've been using Kubuntu as my operating system of choice until I was given a Mac when I started this job, which was a bit of a shock to the system. And I've been using Mortic for about four years, four or five years since it was first started. I built and grew a full service digital agency based in the UK. I'm a power user of Mortic because I've been using it for so long. I know pretty much everything about it from an operational perspective. And this is my first time in Bulgaria. So it's great to be here. So I mentioned digital experience right at the start, and you might be thinking, well, what do you mean by digital experience? It's one of these buzzwords that's coming up in the marketing world. It's sometimes shortened to DX. Um, what we mean by digital experience is creating consistent, personalized brand experience across all the different touch points that someone might encounter when they're interacting with your brand in all the different channels that they use uh, that you own and the customer maybe uses, but you don't necessarily own. So it's that consistency of experience across those platforms. So based on that, how many people feel that your company or your organization give a good, consistent experience across all the digital channels? <laughs> okay, no hands. Well, one maybe hand. It's not a surprise to me, so, and you're not alone. So data from over 200 marketing and customer experience professionals from some of the world's biggest brands in the UK and the USA found that 73% of them couldn't do this. They can't provide a consistent experience across all the different digital, digital channels that they own. And 71% of them have insights, but they can't do anything about it in real time. Around 30 to 40% have real problem uniting information from their website and their mobile sites or their applications. So it's a big problem, and it's not a big problem just for small businesses, it's a big problem at huge scale. So why do we care about this? Why does it matter? Well, ultimately, when you have a lack of consolidated data, it's really difficult for you to be able to deliver a personalized experience. Because you might know a lot of information about someone in your sales CRM, and you've taken a lot of time to get that information, but that information is not being passed across to your website. Or maybe it's not being fully passed across to the system that sends out your email marketing. 
And that means that it's really hard for you to actually treat that person like that known, really important customer all the way through the experience. So when they're dealing with your salesperson, they really feel valued and they feel like they're a known person. They land on their website and they get exactly the same experience as a completely cold lead, which is a really disjointed kind of inconsistent experience. They've already given you lots of information. They all, you already know that they're a valuable lead. So why are you ser serving them up exactly the same content as someone who is brand new to you? And why does this matter? Well, it matters because 80% of people who are shopping, whether this is completely online or whether it's actually just like a store where they're going to buy something, 80% of them will touch at least one digital channel when they're purchasing. So pretty much everyone, you can guarantee, is going to land on one of your digital channels. Most people nowadays will land on multiple. 70% of them, if that's their first time interacting with you, they're not actually at the point where they're ready to buy. They're, not, they're interacting in some way, so they've come to your website or they've signed up for your emails, but they're not in the position where they're ready to buy. And why does that matter? Well, it matters because if you nurture leads properly from that point through to when they do buy, there's a 47% increase in sales volume. That's a huge interest in, uh, increase in sales volume. So you might be thinking, well, great, okay. So what's Mortic? Why, why, why should I care about that? So Mortic is a fully featured open source marketing automation platform. So it allows us to automate and measure the marketing efforts, integrating and personalizing digital properties in all channels, and delivering seamless customer experiences. So that's a bit of a mouthful. If you're a marketer, you might want to know, like, what are the actual parts of my job that this helps with? Because marketers end up, on average, using 14 different tools just to do their job. 14 different places where they have customer insights, 14 different platforms that they're using, and probably half of them aren't talking to each other. So a basic um, starting point for Mortic is it allows you to put some JavaScript on your website that allows you to get insights about what people are doing when they're on your web properties. So you can understand what pages they go to, you can understand what assets they're downloading, and as they go through that process, you can learn more about them. And because you're learning more about them, it allows you to tailor the way you're communicating with them and the way you're interacting with them. You can also use Mortic to build landing pages. So if you're running an AdWords campaign or a Facebook campaign, instead of dumping them onto a generic page on your website, you can build a, pla a landing page within Mortic that allows you to send them to something that's completely customized to where they are in the process. Web forms allow you to capture information from the customer when they're on your website so that you can then start to take them from an anonymous person to someone who you know. And you can associate the information that you're gathering about what they're doing with an actual person. And it also allows you to stop doing the huge, great big forms where they want to know absolutely everything about you in the first interaction. You can do a simple form with just an email address. The next time they come to the website, you can ask for more information. The next time when you know a little bit more about them, you might ask for more information. So it's kind of like the death of the, you know, 100 field form. And then when we get more into the detailed marketing side of things, we can manage our contact profiles and integrate that with our customer relationship tool bi-directionally. So if you gather information through your website, you can push that across into your CRM, or you could push it across into any other enterprise platform. And you can use the information that you learn about your customers to segment them down into relevant groups, which you can then use to communicate with automated campaigns. But those campaigns aren't just about email marketing. So email marketing is where most people start with Mortic. It's a very easy way to kind of get started with it. But you can also do lots of other channels. So Mortic has been built with a multi-channel approach at its core. The channels that you might be, be thinking about would be email, but also you can do social media listening. So if someone uses a particular hashtag, you can get information about that and then take action based on that. You can also send out text messages 
browser notifications, mobile notifications, and anything else really that can plumb in through a REST API. Because Mortix is built on an open architecture, you can basically build plugins to do whatever it is you want to do, to plug into whatever system you want to do. The next thing that gets quite interesting is dynamic content, because with dynamic content, it allows you to um, change the experience for the user based on what you've learned about them. So I mentioned that you don't necessarily want all the same information showing to someone who's a really valuable customer on your website. With dynamic content, if they go through certain processes, you can change the information that's showing on the website, or you can change the information that you send out to an, on an email based on whether their job title is CMO or marketing assistant. Same email, but has different information in it. And then as you get more um, into the marketing side of thing, you've got scoring, you've got account-based marketing, which allows you to have particular people who are responsible for particular leads, and also integrated reporting and analytics and A-B testing as standard. So it's an incredibly powerful tool to have all of that in one place. Whereas as a marketer, you might do that in, say, five or six different places that don't necessarily talk to each other. So some examples with a new customer, they might find you online, and then Mortic presents them with a discount coupon. And then they provide their email address, because who doesn't want 10% off a new handbag or a pair of shoes or whatever it is you're buying? So now you know who they are and that profile is updated with their information. It can pull in any matching social media profiles, so you could also follow them on social media. And you've sent them the information, an email with the coupon. You can track whether they've opened that. You can track what links they're clicking on. If they open the email and click through, but if they don't, you can send them a reminder automatically within a specific time period. And that can flow down into all kinds of different actions you might want to take as a reminder. So they add the product to the cart. The coupon reminder can be displayed when they're in the cart to say, don't forget you've got this coupon. The coupon's applied, the customer checks out. They get an email, maybe even an SMS. You could integrate it with your shipping provider to tell them when the, information, when the package is going to be sent. And then obviously after the purchase, you can follow up with shipping updates and feedback surveys. So that's just one way that you can use Mortic. Another way might be customer retention. So it's understanding that customers want to have information that's relevant to you. And if they're willing to give you the information about what they're interested in, you need to do something with that and give them information that's relevant to them. Otherwise, they'll just hit unsubscribe. So you can ask them to update their customer profile and tell, them what, tell you what they're interested in hearing about and how they're interested. So they might want to receive a text message. They might want to receive an email. They might not want to receive push notifications. And Mortic allows you to put that decision in the hand of the customer. And it's also fully GDPR compliant. So the customer can then receive targeted communications with relevant offers, rather than just your generic, I'm going to send this to my entire uh, database. And then they click through to the offers. And again, if they don't click through, you could send them a reminder. Add the product to the cart. And based on that information, you could show them other relevant products. And then you could also integrate a loyalty system so that you incentivize them to come back and buy again. So the customer profile builds up. You start to learn more about what they're interested in. So you can use, use that information to send them more targeted um, material. What about offline marketing? Because there are still some industries where offline marketing is still important. And what we're seeing is there's a bit of a disconnect between what happens online and what happens offline. So this was actually an example that a community member gave me, a community member who had done this for a customer in Germany. So it was for a cruise line. So the customer finds you online because they're Googling for the best cruises, and they click through to, I don't know, cruises to the Caribbean. And they're at a really early inquiry stage, but they want a glossy brochure that they can show their friends and have on their dining room table and what have you. So they request a brochure, and people who are requesting a brochure are likely to provide you with an, e an address, a physical address. So they're identified, you connect it up with their profile, and through a third-party integration, this community member triggered that through Deutsch Post to actually send the information automatically. So the digital is going out into the offline world and sending a print brochure automatically with a special code. 
So that special code tells you that that inquiry came from a brochure, an offline brochure. You could even personalize it to that offline brochure if they give it to their friends and say, use this code. And then they come back to the site, they book, they use their offer code. The coupon code is associated so you can track the return on investment of sending that brochure out to them. And then they receive a confirmation, maybe through email, maybe through text message, maybe even through post. So you could then send that all back through the postal system. So it sounds great. How do I get started? So Mortic works on a best, works best on a LAMP platform or a LAMP platform, depending on your preferences. You can run it on Windows, but most people will run it on Linux. You can download it for free because it's open source, either through GitHub or through uh, mortic.org slash download. But if you want to get into more detail about actually installing it and playing around with it, I'm doing a workshop tomorrow at half 11 in Workshop Lounge 2 downstairs. So do come along to that. And I'm here for the whole weekend. So if you want to have a look at the actual system, I've got a local host set up so I can show you through some stuff. So the first step is we install a tracking pixel. It looks something like this. The screen's not great, so you may not see it. And what happens is as soon as we pop it onto our web properties, either directly or in Google Tag Manager or whatever Tag Manager you use, um, you'll start to see hits coming into your Mortic platform. And these will be unknown visitors, so they're un anonymous visitors. If you don't want to integrate it like that, you can install one of the content management system plugins. There's a whole load of the pl different plugins for Mortic. Um, depending on what system you're using, there's probably one. If there isn't, you can write your own and submit it to the marketplace, and then we can add it for other people to use. Most of the popular open source content ma management systems are already integrated. And that will automatically put the tracking code, but also, for example, Drupal, uh, Joomla, WordPress, and so on, will let you use a short code for forms, so you don't have to actually embed forms. You can just put a particular short code and then the number of the form, and it will automatically bring that in for you. The next step is where you have to use a bit of brain power, because you have to determine what the customer journey is. So you have to figure out kind of like, OK, this is what the customer is going to do. This is how we want to communicate with them. And then we have to figure out, right, which parts of that are we going to do with Mortic? What other systems maybe do we need to connect up with this? So the next step is connecting data sources. Data sources could be anything. So there's bi-directional integration with things like Salesforce, with things like HubSpot, Sugar CRM, all the common um, systems that businesses use. But it might be that you have your own proprietary system that you've written. You can actually use the REST API to push information into Mortic or pull information from Mortic from that system. So it's very powerful. It means also if you've got like an application and you want to pull that information in, you can pull it in that way as well. The other data sources that we need to set up or the configurations we need to do is the outgoing providers. So by default, you could just use PHPMail and send all your email through your server. But some people prefer not to do that, and they prefer to use a third-party provider. Quite a lot of them are provided out of the box. So we've got things like Elastic Email, Amazon, SparkPost, SendGrid, MailJet, blah, 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 blah. Um, but if it's not integrated through the API, there is also custom SMTP servers. So you can just put the SMTP details in and use your own SMTP server. You can also integrate with that with things like Twilio and uh, OneSignal to do your text messaging or your browser notifications and push notifications. So I've mentioned the plugins and APIs and integrations. If you're interested in the REST API, it's all at developer.mortic.org. All the endpoints are documented there with code examples. So if there's anything that you're a bit stuck on or you want to know more about, you can just give us a shout. And then that's the next step is, well, we've got the tracking information. We've pulled in all the information from all the places that we're holding customer data. And we've connected up all of our bits and pieces in the configuration. So the next step is collecting your lead information. So this is kind of where the magic starts to happen. There are lots of different ways that you can do this. Some are more annoying than others. Some are more appropriate in different cultures to others. So again, it's about understanding your users, understanding what they 
are willing to engage with and what they're not willing to engage with. The classic example is a landing page. So this is a landing page that's been built in Mautic. Um, Ebooks or free downloads or anything like that are very popular, very common, and very easy. You could also use it for registering for a webinar, for example, because there's a bi-directional integration with GoToWebinar. So landing pages are really popular for that. And these fields, you would just choose the fields that you want to show on the form, connect them up with the fields that you've created in Mautic. It allows you to have unlimited custom fields. So you can have as many custom fields as are relevant to your business. But that's the point, being relevant to your business. The other way that you could get, capture information is through focus items. So that's things like pop-ups or modal bars or things that come in from the side when people are engaging with your content. And it also allows you to use exit intent. So when someone is ab about to leave the, pe uh, the website, so they're like moving away from the center of the browser, and that can also be triggered from a campaign. So you can say, if they're based in the UK and they land on this page, then show this focus item. And this is giving you a quick example of a focus item in a campaign builder on this little GIF. It's not very clear, unfortunately, because of the contrast of the screen. But it's a simple drag and drop interface. It's very, very user friendly. And that's one of the most um, talked about features of Mautic is that once it's implemented for marketers coming on board, it's really, really quick. The learning curve is very, very shallow compared to systems like Marketo or Pardo, which take quite a lot of time. It's like you need to be a ninja before you can even really effectively use it. And progressive profiling, so I touched a little bit on this. This is something that's really up and coming, and it's um, something that you really need to look at if you're doing marketing. And that is about automatically gathering new information to progressively populate the profile of your contacts rather than, okay, give me your email address and then the next form you fill in is like 50 fields. And it also allows you obviously to automatically provide information and take decisions about what you're asking them based on the behavior on the website. I mentioned that the system is GDPR compliant. So it's as GDPR compliant as you are in implementing it. So we can build the most compliant tool, but if you do silly things with it, it's not going to be compliant. So that's my caveat on this. So within Mautic, you're able to create segments that let you chunk people down into say, I'm interested in marketing, I'm interested in sales, I'm interested in product information, and you can make those public. And that allows your customers to say, I don't want to hear this, I do want to hear this, or I don't want to receive that. Generally, I recommend that you start with one of those segments at the top, and that always guarantees that if that person has opted out of that kind of information, they won't receive that information. You can also uh, uh, empower your customers to decide how they want to hear from you. They can decide that they only want to hear from you a maximum of once per month. So you can set that globally, but the customer can override it and say, actually, I only want to hear from you once a week or once a fortnight. And they can also decide to take a break completely. So they can say, don't contact me between this point and this point, and then no communications will go out to that customer. And that's on a per channel basis. Yeah, they can also say, I don't ever want to hear from you again. And that sets a do not contact tag on their um, profile, which means that even if they're in campaigns, halfway through campaigns, they won't receive the communications. And then finally, when, you start, when you've got all of that set up, we're going to move into nurturing those leads. So starting from that point where they're at their first contact with you and they're maybe not quite ready to buy from you to when they actually buy or when they engage with you or whatever your outcome is. Segmentation is really simple. So I'm going to use, I've been told I have to use a little pointer because it will show up on the screen for people watching remotely. So you can see here that this is um, a field in Mautic called lead status here. And we said lead status equals nurture. So you can configure the status to whatever is relevant to your business. So it might be one, top of the funnel, middle of the funnel, bottom of the funnel. It might be nurture, warm lead, pot lead, whatever. So what we're doing here is that they are in the nurture stage and they were identified less than 
whatever date. So you, that would be people who are recent, maybe, who are in the nurture stage. And then based on that, you might put them into a campaign which starts a certain process. You can segment like this based on any field in MORTIC, demographic, behavioral, custom fields, anything like that. And it allows you, as I mentioned, to use multiple channels. So it gives you a lot of, lot of flexibility. And you can start with one channel, and then you can move out to another channel. You don't have to do a big bang and do everything all at once. But if you're a big agency and you're already doing that, it has all of the tools in the box for you to do that. So the great thing about Mortic is it can scale with your business. You can just start by putting the tracking code in and watching what people are doing and nothing else. And then you can, when you're ready, you can put forms in and start identifying people. So it really does grow with your business or your organization. This is a quick GIF that shows you the drag and drop campaign builder. It literally is a case of clicking on something, choosing the values from the drop down boxes, and then deciding whether it's, you want to have an action, a condition. Um, so here you can, oh, it's really poor contrast. So you can say, um, if they're in this segment, then I want to send them this email right away, or I want to send it in two weeks or seven days or 24 hours from the point that they join. So it might be that they fill in a form, and then uh, uh, seven hours later, you send them an email. And then you can have decision flows that say, if they open the email, go down this process, and if they don't open the email, go down that process. So that might be... If they open the email, then um, flag them up, change their status from like cold lead to warm lead or something like that. And it can be at the bottom of this, which you can't really see on the screen, unfortunately. It's things like um, if they book an appointment with you, then send them a confirmation text message. If they are checking into a hotel, once they check in, send them an email and send them a text message with the key contact information and so on and so forth. But it's all built through this really simple to use interface with very easy to build um, campaigns. Dynamic content, which is one of the features I mentioned. So this is one email that you would receive in, if you were, say, in the United States. And then this one over here is an email that you would receive if you were in Europe. Same email, but you're changing the image, for example, based on what country they're in, or you're changing the copy based on what country they're in. And you can do the same on a website. So this is where I was saying if there are new leads, you would set, show different information. Because it's also a bit of a waste of space. So here we've got a field where we're asking for the email address. Well, if somebody's already given us the email address, then why are we using that to ask for the email address? It's a waste of space. What you could do is put a more relevant call to action here. And you can do that anywhere on your website. So you can add slots on the website and then push the content based on the behavior of that lead. Email builders, if you're a developer, for me, well, the bane of my life was marketers who would use like font styling and change things to ridiculous colors or move things and it breaks from mobile, things like that. You can build your email template so that only these blue areas you can see on here are editable. The rest of it is configured by you as a developer. As a marketer, that's really great because you click in it, your, what you see is what you get editor appears on the right-hand side, and it's just what you're familiar with. You know, press B to go bold. You can insert tokens to per personalize that email based on the name, and you can also create variations of the email, for example, based on the job title or based on information you know about that person. A-B testing is there out of the box. So you create your email, you press one button, it asks you what information is it that you want to um, determine the success of this test. So it might be click-through rate, it might be open rate, it might be the downloads of an asset. And what percentage of traffic do you want to send? You save that and it does it automatically. And then you can decide once it's run which one you want to, to go with. And it's the same for landing pages. So once you've got all of that running and you're looking at, you wanting to look at kind of how effective is that? Is it working? Is it not working? There's a whole reporting section within Mortic. So that allows you to create the re reports that are relevant to you. And you can either have them just for you. So I might create reports that are sort of high level stuff that I'm interested in. But my marketing team 
might be interested in really drilling down into the detail of how a particular email is performing, or what the click-through rates are on the landing pages, or where the traffic came from. So they can have their own reports, and I don't need to see that. Or we can create reports that are shared across everybody. And the nice thing about Mortic is it has a users and roles facility built in. So you can create users who have really tightly locked down access. So maybe they can only see the leads that they're responsible for, the resources that they've created. Maybe they can view resources that other people have created, but they can't edit them, or they can't publish them, for example. So you might have some people who you don't want to publish a campaign and set it live until someone else has approved it, but you do need them to create it. So there's a whole users and roles um, system set up within Mortic, which allows you to do that. There's also a whole, that, so when you first log into Mortic, there's a dashboard, and that is also configurable. So the first thing you see when you log in, you can either see a dashboard or any other page in Mortic, it's a setting, but you can actually choose what information is surfaced, so you don't have to keep going looking for the things that you're looking for all the time. So as I mentioned, GitHub, um, Mortic is open source. We're on github.com slash Mortic, and all of the repositories for the project are under slash Mortic. So if you're interested in Mortic, the actual platform, it's slash Mortic after that. We've also got development, developer documentation, documentation, a whole bunch of official plugins. You'll find them all on there in GitHub. We also manage all of our translations through Transifex, and I had a quick look at the Bulgarian one, and it could do with a bit of love. Um, so if anyone is interested in helping complete that translation and fix some of the bits that are supposed to be in Bulgarian but are in English, um, you can sign up there and join the team or come and speak to me afterwards if you've never used Transifex. Our website um, needs a bit of TLC, and it's at mortic.org, so I know there's lots of broken things on there, and we're working on fixing it. And we also have a Slack instance. So if you're interested in joining the community, we have around about 6,500 people in our Slack instance. So it's a really vibrant community from all over the world. Yesterday, I actually just came from our first Mortic Community Summit, where we've been working on migrating from Symphony 2.2 up to Symphony 3. something, 4, I think, um, before the end of the month, because that's when it becomes end of life. And we've also been implementing a community governance structure because the community is very young. We, although we've been around for four years, there's not really any governance structure. So a team of us were working on how do, what working groups do we need, what teams do we need, how do we enc encourage people to get involved, and then how do they kind of progress up and take leadership roles in the project. So it's a very exciting time to be part of this community because we are actually kind of building it at the moment. And the forums, so this is our little Mortybot, he's our mascot. So meet Mortybot. And the forums are at forum.mortic.org. Very, very popular. It's where most people go to get help and support, but it also has our features and ideas section. So that's me. If there are any questions you have about Mortic, please throw them my way. As I mentioned, I'll be here for the rest of the day and tomorrow. So if anyone sees me and you want to grab a coffee, then just shout. So thank you. Any questions? <laughs> if anyone has some questions, yeah, raise your hand. Do you have any integration with social networks? Do we have integrations with social networks? Uh, yes. What you can do with social networks has changed dramatically in the last four years because they have withdrawn a lot of the things in their API. So on Twitter, we've got Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, uh, I think Foursquare is even on there, um, and Google+, Plus, but that's kind of no more, is it? So, yeah. But what you can do with them varies based on the API. Oh, and also social media. We have social media login on landing pages as well. So. Hey, thank you for your presentation. My question is, what's the governance model of, of this open source project? 
So when you talk about governance model, that can mean different things. So do you mean in terms of the code and the licensing and the core team, or do you mean in terms I mean of the in community? In terms of uh, technical decisions and how the uh -huh. project will evolve over time, do you have something like a community board or? Yeah, really great question. Um, and that's what I was talking about in terms of establishing a governance model. When Acquia acquired Mortic Inc., they acquired the Mortic brand. And so effectively they own the brand of Mortic. So we've been working on uh, proposing a governance model that allows, it's basically ground up, but also allows them to have some involvement in managing and protecting that brand. And then over time, passing that on as like a stewardship to the community to manage. We're in the very early stages of implementing that. In terms of technical decision making, the product lead, D.B. Hurley, is ultimately responsible for the technical direction. There's a team of core engineers who pretty much are the people who've been contributing the most. But it's very much, a, it, we're trying to go on a basis of like meritocracy and democracy, which if anyone's tried to implement that with companies involved, and marketing gets quite interesting place to be doing open source as well. It is challenging, and we're in the process of fathoming that out, really. So also part of my role is listening to other open source projects about how they do that and what processes they have and learning from them, both the positives and the negatives, and sharing our experiences. So if anyone has any governance stuff, then yeah, please do come find me. Does that answer your question well enough? Yeah. Okay, someone else? Okay. Um, first, thanks. And I have two questions. Yep. First is, um, do you support mobile apps natively? So do you ship uh, mobile SDKs or is it just REST API? Say I'm Spotify and I want to use Mautic in my app. And second is, uh -huh. say I'm actually Spotify and I have millions of users and I want to self-host this. Um, how can I scale up? Or yes. can I scale up easily? Great question. So in answer to the first question, I'm not a developer. I'm what I call technical enough to be dangerous. Um, so my understanding is REST API. I don't believe we have an SDK. The best place to ask that would be hashdev on our Slack channel, because that's where all the more technical people than me will hang out. Um, the second question, there's two options. So any software can pretty much do anything if you put, well, OK, Mortic can pretty much do anything if you put the infrastructure in place. However, there are some aspects of it which will struggle when you start to get to super, super mega numbers. Um, there's two ways you can deal with that. There's some people in our community who are doing, dealing with super mega, mega numbers. You really have to have some technical chops to be able to do that, because you have to set your infrastructure up right. You have to do some optimization within Mortic. There's also a hosted version of Mortic, which is supported by Acquia, which has full support. That is already servicing mega, 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 mega numbers. Six million emails sent every day in daily spikes, that kind of number, or, or more. Um, so that is an option if you don't want to do the self-host. Um, and yeah, in terms of like the community product's future, we're really open to people's insights into how to do that. Because ultimately, with open source, you only grow through people saying, well, this doesn't work so well. We could do it this way. Let's change things. So if, yeah, if people find it's difficult, then they can contribute back or have discussions with other people who are working with that kind of scale and then figure out the best way forward. OK, thank you. We still have some time for some more questions. So are there any more volunteers? No. Well, OK. Uh, OK. She said that uh, you can find her later in the yep. speaker's room and also on the link she has posted. So let us thank her again for her presentation. You're welcome.